Hey guys, this is Josh here from Trillium Wild Edibles, and today I want to bring you all an identification video on prickly lettuce. We can see this rather tall plant growing here in front of us with all these kind of little flower buds coming out of the top. This is known as prickly lettuce. This is one of the several different species of wild lettuce that you're probably going to be finding all across the United States. This is an extremely easy plant to identify, and it does have some great medicinal uses that we're going to be talking about with this plant. Now this time of year, around from April, May, all the way through August, you're probably going to be noticing this very tall plant with these very distinct flower buds coming up out of the top here. If we take a closer look at the stem here where these flower buds are coming out, we're going to notice there are numerous flower buds all across this stem. And if we look, we're going to notice multiple stems with multiple flower buds. If we look really closely at some of these flower buds this time of year, we're going to notice some of them might be closed, but we can actually see the color of these here, and they are yellow, kind of like a light dandelion color. Now these flowers are obviously closed, but whenever they're open, they're going to be in a ray-like shape with anywhere from 15 to 20 petals on each one of these flowers. Now after your wild lettuce flowers, you're going to notice these little fuzzy kind of seeds. These are the actual seeds of the wild lettuce. A lot like dandelion, this plant has the exact same strategy as dandelion for pollination and seeding itself through the wind. If we take a close look at this, we can actually see just how fuzzy it is, just like you would expect to see on a dandelion after a dandelion has flowered. If we look very closely at the stem where the leaves join, we're going to notice that the leaves are clasping, just like we can see how it clasps around the outside of the stem. The leaves will alternate going back and forth on both sides. And we're going to notice this alternating leaf pattern on every stem. We can actually see several different types of leaves. So let's take a quick look at some of these types of leaves here. Here towards the very top of the plant, we're going to notice that the leaves actually get smaller and they get a lot more ovate in shape or almost egg shaped, if you will. We're also going to notice this very prominent mid vein or mid rib running down the center of each one of these leaves. It's very, very bright and light green versus the dark green contrasts very well with these leaves. As we get further towards the bottom of the plant, we're going to notice a different set of leaves here. We can also see just how much bigger these leaves actually get compared to the ones at the top. We can also notice this prominent midrib running through, just very, very distinct. However, this plant gets its name from these prickles running along the midrib that we can see here and running along the margins of the leaves. These prickles are very, very stiff. They're not going to hurt you unless you press really, really hard, but even then it probably won't hurt too bad. They actually kind of break off and bend fairly easily. We're going to notice that the leaves are very, very deeply lobed. They're very, very long and elongated. They look similar to a dandelion leaf. And at the very tip, we're going to see multiple lobes here towards the tip getting smaller and smaller versus these sharp divisions that we can see right here spreading along each one of these lobes. As we continue to go up the plant from the ground, we're going to notice a whole lot of leaves coming out. And remember that alternating leaf pattern that we discussed. If we look closely in some of these nodes, we're going to notice some of these small little leaves coming out of each one of these nodes at the base. Now, as we get a little bit higher on the plant, like I said earlier, these leaves are going to get smaller and they are going to change shape a little bit. You can see there's not near as many lobes on this one as there is on the basal leaves. So make sure you keep that in mind. Now this is a Lactuca species, which means it's known for this lactating quality. If I were to pull this leaf off, if I pull that leaf off, you can actually see this milky latex-like sap coming out of it. Now this sap actually has a lot of medicinal uses as being a good pain reliever. So make sure you keep that in mind. There are several different parts of the wild lettuce plant that you can use for food or medicine. These flower buds, before they actually open and create these little yellow flowers, can actually be boiled and eaten kind of like you would broccoli. It's absolutely delicious, boiled for about five to 10 minutes. And honestly, I found usually five minutes to be just the right amount of time. I don't like it more than 10 minutes because I think it, honestly, it reduces it too much and it doesn't taste near as good. So make sure you keep that in mind to not overboil these flower buds. You might notice after touching it and getting that sap on you that the sap is kind of sticky. You can see the sort of sticky nature on my fingers here. That stickiness of the sap can actually be used to help peel off warts slowly over time. So if you were to have a wart on your finger, you could actually apply some of this sap to the wart 
and then peel the sap off and eventually over time the wart will come off. This doesn't work on every wart, but it is possible. Now if we look here, we can actually see one of the younger prickly lettuce plants that's growing in this area. And we're going to notice a little bit of a variation, not only in the leaves, but also on the stem. If we look at the stem on the younger plants, we're going to notice these spines running along the length of the stem. We can see those little spines along the margins of the leaves and on the midrib as well on the top of the frame. Now if we look at the base of this younger prickly lettuce plant, we're going to notice that the leaves actually look a lot different. These aren't nearly as deeply lobed. There are little bitty lobes on them, but they're not near as deeply as lobed as the ones that we see towards the top or that we've seen on the more mature prickly lettuce plant. So keep in mind that there are several variations of leaves that you're going to be finding. In the early spring, this plant is just a basal rosette, which a lot of people will confuse with dandelion. I'll show a picture of that up here in the right hand side of the frame. You can actually boil these leaves whenever they're young and then you can eat them as a food just like you would like a spinach or a dandelion green. They are absolutely delicious and you aren't going to get any of the pain relieving effects if you boil it and eat the leaves. So make sure you keep that in mind. If you're going for a pain reliever, you do not want to boil these and eat the leaves. You actually want to make a tea out of these leaves and you want to use that sap. There are several wonderful videos on YouTube on how to make a good pain reliever out of this plant. Now you guys may remember on that younger prickly lettuce plant that we looked at, there were a lot of spines along the stem. This one, as we can see, those spines are pretty much gone. And this is something that you're going to notice in your prickly lettuce plants as they get older and taller and a lot more mature like we are on this one here. This plant can get extremely tall. It can get anywhere from five and a half to seven and a half feet tall. But I usually find it at about this height, which is about six feet. Wild lettuce often grows in fields, clearings, on the edges of lawns, like we can see here on the edge of a lawn here, in a local park. And we can actually see this wild lettuce, and we can actually see this wild lettuce sticking up right there. We can see some of the other ones that we were just looking at over there underneath it. And we can see this normal, this is the normal type of environment that you're going to be finding your wild lettuce in. If we look here in front of us, we can see another really tall wild lettuce plant. This one is about seven feet tall. This guy is extremely tall. Like I said, I normally don't find them this high, but they can get to that height. Whenever you're looking at this plant from a distance, it's a lot easier to see how big these leaves can get and that prominent white, almost white like mid rib or mid vein running through the center of the leaves with this alternating leaf pattern. It's a very, very easy plant to identify. And honestly, this guy sticks out like a sore thumb in the environments that it grows in. So that's how you guys can identify prickly lettuce. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and I hope you learned something. If you wanna learn more about wild edibles or medicinal plants, please make sure to subscribe.